Hi, Red Rock and Jeffrey's United Methodist Churches um, and anyone else who's actually listening here. I'm Pastor Wes Johnson and I'm sharing this video blog from my home here in Marshall, Minnesota uh, of living in uncertain times because that certainly is what we are living in. And last week, you know, I, I was standing in practically the very same place, the uh, same spot that I am today, if you'll remember. But today, it looks quite different, doesn't it? You know, last week I, I talked about how Pam and I have been living in these uncertain times, so really almost for two months now, a little over two months, of this kitchen project that we had. We took out a wall here, and, and, and we've been going in this with uncertainty, with chaos. What has kept us going through the times of dust and all the equipment that's been around and, and our paths having to go differently what has kept us going has been that vision of what it was going to look like. And, and, and we needed to have that, and we need to have that same vision as well of life getting back to some sense of maybe old patterns, but certainly of, of more of a routine, even of learning new patterns that, that we have to learn through this time of COVID-19 that may help us through this uncertain and chaotic time as well. So, so we need to keep our minds set upon those things. We talked about that last week. Well, today, you can see that, that some of our vision has now taken place. You can see the counter that is here. We have a dishwasher. It's not fully um, plugged in and everything, and we can't use it yet, but it's there. But you see still that there's a floor that still needs to be finished yet. We have a lot of painting that needs to be done. There's a lot of trim work that needs to be done. Uh, the chaos, the uncertainty is not done, but it is a whole lot clearer today, this week, than it was even last week. And I wanted to say this, that there will be times through COVID-19 that that chaos gets worse. But then there will also be times when it gets better. And we need to focus our attention upon those getting better times because that helps us not only get to the end, but it helps us live in the midst of that uncertainty. But, you know, there's some things that have gotten worse, haven't they, in this last week? The stay-at-home order from the governor that will take place midnight on Friday. More freedom is taken away from us. We look and see that there's more trials that are going to be taking place. There are things that have gotten worse. Our bishop has now called upon our churches here in not only Minnesota, but the Dakotas to have no in-person worship through May 10th and really no gatherings as well. That means Holy Week and Easter. He even said he didn't think he'd ever tell pastors not to meet together for Holy Week and Easter. We could never have seen this coming about. It has gotten a whole worse. It's worse because the numbers of infection and, and deaths, they continue to rise, don't they? And they are expected to rise even more significantly even after this. But I want you to also realize there's glimpses of better as well. You know, I, I don't think I believed I would see this, but I saw a picture of Senator Mitch McConnell and Representative Nancy Pelosi actually celebrating together. They were bumping elbows, if I remember right, in, in expectation of the stimulus package that is hopefully going to be fully um, uh, fully accepted here coming up tomorrow. And, and, and of course, that brings us to that stimulus package. And it appears that it's going to be happening. Um, I couldn't believe it. there was a 100% vote in the Senate for it. This is this is $2 trillion and even more of a relief package never seen before in the United States at all. Really upon the planet probably either, I would guess. But many people are choosing to reach out more as well. Um, even having to slow down. We've learned that there's some good things in slowing down. I hope you've learned that as well. You know, there are good things that we're learning and, and we're, we're discovering even in the midst of of this uncertain and chaotic time. You know, it's interesting, my Bible reading yesterday was chapter 10 of Ezra. Now, Ezra, Ezra was a priest, and he came back with a number of exiles. They had been exiled to Babylon. Think about difficult times. They were taken away from their whole country. And, and about 80 years later, they come back, and, and Ezra brings back a number of these exiles, but there's already a group that has already come back and are already in the land uh, back in Jerusalem. 
And, and, but Ezra's coming back to, to teach them the law, to get them to live according to God's laws better, to please God. And as he comes back, he finds a situation there that, that is extremely con concerning, uh, that there is extensive nonconformity to the law of the Lord. And, and for Ezra, it is a terrible sight. And so they have lived in great uncertainty. And the, the road to return to, to worship God completely and what's required of them is to take drastic measures, extremely drastic measures. And they had to take these drastic measures that took away their freedoms, that, that took away their personal desires, even split families. But they were needed in order to bring about the greater good. It's kind of a little bit like us. Our drastic measures, and they feel drastic, but they're not even close to what Ezra had to enforce in his day. And they certainly are not nearly as permanent as what the Jews had to go through at that time. But they cause us great uncertainty, don't they? And even fear of what is to come. But Ezra says in the face of his uncertain time, this is what he says, chapter 10, verse 2, we have been unfaithful to our God, but in spite of this, there is still hope for Israel. In spite of this, there is still hope for Israel. Hope is necessary in uncertain times. Hope not just for an end to this, as our vision was, but hope that in the midst of this, we can still find hope in God. We have seen signs of hope, even though the darkness and uncertainty still surround us. Hold on to that hope that you see, hear, and feel. Hold on to the hope that you always have in God, who comes and walks with you, in all of our seemingly hopeless situations. Last week, there was nothing here. It was, it was a junk place. But see what has changed in a week? Keep hope, my friends. So I want to encourage you, watch this weekend for our service on Facebook. Set aside a time to worship uh, with us on Facebook. This is Pastor Wes, Peace and Towels.